Walt Disney is in trouble. Uh, the Disney company stock nine years. It's been basically the same price, whether it is the streaming era where they are losing $11 billion, whether it is ESPN, the cable networks, as they are losing tens of millions of subscribers, whether it's people choosing not to go woke, watch woke programming like the new Indiana Jones movie, which I thought was okay. I took my boys. I enjoyed it. But the overwhelming majority of the public has not agreed. That movie is tanking. Uh, certainly the most recent Pixar movie has been a disaster. Star Wars is basically to the point where they're having to reimagine uh, everything. The Marvel movies are not bringing home the money like they used to. There's major issues on all fronts for Walt Disney, including even the parks themselves, Disneyland and Disney World, are not putting forth the usual crowds that they would. And Buck, we talked about this Snow White movie which I think is starting to crystallize for a lot of people. Man, this is not your mom and dad's or your grandma and grandpa's Walt Disney Company. This is an activist, woke, incredibly uh, ridiculous worldview that they have created. And, and, And Buck, before I even play this Walt Disney clip for you, over the weekend I was reading in the Wall Street Journal, uh, and there was an article about the incredible challenge that the Disney movies are now finding in China. And I couldn't believe the data that I saw there. Um, Chinese people are not going and watching movies like they used to, American movies. And there was a couple of lines here I wanted to read to you. Few performances so far uh, have been as much of a disaster. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. Few performances so far have been as anemic as Disney's The Little Mermaid which has grossed $3.7 million since last May, putting it on par with one of the world's most populous countries in China with what they made off this movie in Chile, which has a population of 19.5 million. On Chinese social media and in the theater, some moviegoers expressed reluctance to see a movie that had cast a black actress in the role of Ariel. And this is a quote. The Little Mermaid is too focused on political correctness, said Zhao, a a Shanghai freelancer in her 40s. I go to the cinema for entertainment, not to be instilled with certain values. I don't know what this represents, but I read this quote, Buck. Disney has gotten so woke that even Chinese people who live in a totalitarian communist regime aren't going to see Disney movies because they think they're too politically correct. And I want to play this audio of uh, Walt Disney. And I feel like when this movie comes out, I believe it's scheduled for release in March of next year. This is the actress in the Snow White movie, you mean, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Is that what I said? The you, you, Snow you White said, movie. You said audio of Walt Disney. I was like, well, that's going to oh, be sorry. interesting. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, not audio of Walt Disney himself. This is audio from the actress who's playing Snow White saying that, you know, the movie at night that came out in 1937, the seven dwarfs that everybody on the planet pretty much has seen and most people loved, uh, that's not going to be the version of Snow White that you guys all see. Listen. It's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White. That she's is not going to be yeah. saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave, and true. And so it's just a really incredible story for, I think, young people everywhere to see themselves in. You know, it, it's supposed to be a fairy tale. Right. And, and the fairy tale is supposed to make people feel good. It, it is. Yeah. All fairy tales have at some level a there's a moral of the story. Right. There's some takeaway from it. But, you know, what's wrong with romantic love? Like what, what, what's wrong with a guy and a girl meet? They fall in love and live happily ever after. Like now it's all. Yeah. Go boss girl. Like that's how Snow White has to be these days. It's just all so, so forced. And ultimately, they also run into what is contrary to our basic human nature is generally not super popular and appealing, right? So so the rejection of, especially in the, the ultimate kind of romantic notion of a fairy tale, right? A fairy tale is, you know, happily ever after and takes you to another world. And uh, the rejection of romantic love in favor of, 
growing to be the leader that she can be. I mean, what is Snow White like Che Guevara all of a sudden? Like, who cares? Like, what what is this all about? Like, why do they have to do this? It's Clay. I wish there were there needs to be a betting website. This would be a phenomenal thing where you can bet on the box office receipts of a movie. I would bet the farm this Snow White movie is going down. I would bet the I farm. I said that's going to be my thesis, that this is going to be the movie where it becomes impossible, even for the people out there who are trying to say, uh, you're wrong, Disney's not suffering, Disney's not woke, this is going to be the one where it becomes impossible to make that argument. I got two funny uh, tweets here for you. The Babylon Bee, fabulously funny uh, uh, website, Disney to remove problematic kiss from classic movie. Snow White will now remain dead. That's that's pretty funny. Spoiler alert that for those of you out there, the one person who hasn't seen Snow White. Saved at the end by the kiss from the handsome prince. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, and then Tommy Laren, who's at OutKick now and doing really good work, she said, I wish Disney would do a remake of The Little Mermaid where Ariel's swimming dreams are crushed because she's swimming against a man. Let's really modernize this, liberals. Woke it all the way up to 2023 standards. It is really funny to think about, right? We get like the macho man Randy Savage to put on a little fishtail bottom like in the South Park cartoons. Like, oh yeah, I love swimming in the ocean. (laughs) I mean, also this notion of the the rejection of a fairy tale, the rejection of of a love story or somehow a love story is not, what, the, the great fulfillment in life is that, oh, you know, it, instead of finding like the you know the beautiful princess and living happily ever after, what you get to make junior partner at the law firm, get to play a little more golf on the weekend now. Who cares? Who cares? I don't understand why there is this. Deg- they they feel like look, you can do you can do more than one thing, but there's this clear need to degrade traditional gender gender roles. That's for sure, and then also. Uh, just in general, to to make it seem like uh, love, romance, and and the the bonding of men and women is is somehow not something that should be celebrated in in our culture and in our our artwork the same way that it used to be. I'm not saying entirely, but the same way that it used to be. I, Why? Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I get with the idea of okay, it's not 1937. We're going to update Snow White. By the way, Snow White is a fairy tale from like the 1600s or whatever it is, right? So. Even in 1937, Snow White was being updated in some way by Disney. I mean, with the dwarves and everything else. But the the, the historical, that actually, think about this. This has resonated with people for hundreds of years. There's a reason it resonates because it's, you know, the same reason that, you know, little eight-year-old girls, you know, I don't have a daughter, but I can assume from what everyone else tells me that, like, they like to dress like princesses. And, you know, they start thinking about, you know, one day... There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a princess when you're a little girl who grows up and meets the handsome prince and lives happily ever after. Like, there's actually some important social messaging in this. Uh, I remember when I got married. Prior to getting married, I never really gave any thought at all to my wedding. In, in my Certainly not when I was a kid. I never thought, like, I want my wedding to be like this and I will wear... Every woman who is listening to us right now and correct me if I'm wrong, I I had no idea. Like, when you're like eight or nine years old, you're thinking about your wedding. I had, like, I didn't even, I didn't even hardly think about my wedding when I actually got to my own wedding. My wife, to her credit, planned everything. I was taking the bar exam. I had no idea what was going on. I put on a tuxedo and they told me to walk down the aisle. I had nothing to do with any planning. I had nothing to do with any aspect of it. She did a fabulous job putting it all together. I, the, the idea, look, Disney, this is what's interesting to me, Buck. Disney has all the data. They created the entire princess universe. Every little girl, it seems to me, identifies with one or the other of a princess. And one of the things that if you have like a six or seven year old girl, they want to do if they get to go to Disney World or Disneyland is get to dress up like a princess. Like this is a hugely successful thing. So Disney knows all of this has worked. Why would you decide? First, first of all, I think the idea of doing live action versions of commercial yeah. of, of, of cartoons is stupid. And I think it's indicative of a lack of creative drive and focus and coming up with something new. Okay, so let's start there. But 
if you're going to do a live action remake of a wildly successful show, a movie, why would you do it where you're not going to have seven dwarfs? Where you're going to have like one dwarf and six creepy looking dudes like we saw in the picture? Why would you decide that you're not going to have a white woman play Snow White? It feels so desperate to be woke that even the woke people are going to reject it. Well, the, w- wokeness, you know, there's there's real psychological and psychiatric basis for this. And people that, that go extremely woke, they tend to be um, malcontents with a feeling of emptiness in their day-to-day lives. And this philosophy of wokeness gives them immediate, we talk about virtue signaling, right? Which maybe sounds a little too much like a think tank term, but it gives them an immediate sense of, I'm a good person. In fact, I'm better than other people. The people that are living lives that seem happier than me, it's not actually true. I'm woke. I'm better than them. It's a delusion, effectively. Wokeness, wokeness ends up being, for a lot of people, um, filling an emptiness inside of them, and it creates this delusion of a, of a false happiness because it's always, there's always a zero-sum aspect to it because they, they know there's going to be resistance from the other side. People like you and me, you know, these different left-wing sites, if they were to clip this, they'd be like, oh, these two, two heterosexual white males don't like the snow, you know, all this stuff. You sit here and go, we're just, we're just telling people what, what the obvious reality has been of human existence for all time, which is that people like love stories, and that's okay, and it doesn't always have to be about catering to wokeness, but it's an addiction for some people, even at the expense of the bottom line. That's the part that comes back to me, is ultimately... All of this wokeness is destroying decades of brand equity that was created in Disney, where you felt like as a parent, okay, I can just set my kid down in front of this movie and I know it's going to reflect well on the values that I would like for my kids to embody. And now it's, we're going to reject everything upon which the company was founded and it's somehow going to advance the underlying company's brand, yeah, I think that's a disaster. 